my name is Hans Schmitz, an agricultural meteorologist with the Purdue Cooperative Extension Service based out of Gibson County, Indiana. When we're talking about our personal weather station, we can go pretty simple or we can go pretty high tech. What you see behind me is an example of a more high tech kind of weather station. At the top of the tower, you can see that we have an anemometer. Generally, if we're measuring more than just temperature and precipitation, the third thing we want to measure is wind speed and direction. And that's what an anemometer does. We also, if we're going to have a tower type of weather station, are going to want a lightning rod that you see in the middle there. That's going to help protect our instruments from the potential for some electrical weather. Now, why choose to have a tower rather than a ground-based sensor system? The answer is fairly simple. If we measure our weather variables at a certain height above the ground, we eliminate the effect of the ground surface on our weather measurements. Let's finish out the top of the tower by talking about that little plate up there. That little plate up there has a very small circular sensor on it that is measuring the photosynthetically active radiation band. Now photosynthetically active radiation is pretty much what you would consider to be visual light, but it's one measure that we can have of the amount of light that's being received on a surface throughout the day, which could be very useful when we're wanting to look at crop growth, whether it's in the garden, in the field, or just on the lawn itself. More instrumentation, as you can see here, this is temperature and humidity in a different setting. It still has slats. It still has your thermometer within the center of the instrument, but it is a much more expensive proposition to put one of these in rather than just taking a typical mercury type thermometer and putting it into a shady setting. Now, not all of these sensors are passive. Some of them require some active electricity to take their measurements. And for that reason, we have here a solar panel. Solar panel technology, as we all know, has come a long way in the past few decades. And this size solar panel provides plenty of electricity to keep our unit running. In some way, shape, or form, when we collect weather measurements, we have to find a way to collect them and store them and use them, whether it's going out once a day or twice a day and writing down by hand what we find, or in this case, we have a data logger in this box that is gonna collect our measurements and store them for us so that maybe we only have to come out every three days, once a week, uh, and take the measurements from this data logger and then push them into a format that we'd like to use. There are also some weather stations that can run wiring along the ground and into a building that could then receive all of our measurements onto a computer system. There are also newer weather stations that can rely on cellular service, 3G, 4G service to remotely transmit data. 